All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in a lovely, sunny San Diego afternoon. And I'm delighted to be joined by Catherine Malloy, who is on the Sunshine Coast in Australia tomorrow. Hey, I'm here Thursday <laughs> afternoon. Catherine's there Friday morning, bright and early. So I really appreciate you getting up early to, to talk with us today. Uh, Catherine's international speaker and communication expert, uh, 25 years of experience in business training and facilitation, and especially in um, especially in communication, neurolinguistic programming, I think you have your degree in, as well as obviously all your business experience. And what we wanted to talk today is how to optimize communication when it comes to sales, but not just in the traditional sense of face-to-face, but in all the ways that challenge salespeople nowadays in virtual communication, even in, I mean, people, uh, salespeople are now communicating with prospects through text, for goodness sake. So, I mean, what about, what challenges are facing people today in figuring out how to be effective in their communication when people are communicating in so many different ways, Catherine? Wow, so that's a very big question. Yeah. I always like to ask a big question and then just sit back. <laughs> sit back and see what happens. You know, it's really important. We all need to upgrade the number one skill on the planet, and that's communication. Mm-hmm. And so many businesses close down because they don't really know how to communicate to the customer. Now, the interesting thing is technology has changed. The way we grow food, eat food, buy food. Uh, our furniture for our offices, all these wonderful things. But guess what? The raw behavior styles of people haven't changed. And I think this is the key to the way that we build sales. Now, I actually wrote a book called The Million Dollar Handshake. It's Mm -hmm. just been published in three languages. Uh, It only was released last year. It's in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. And we've just picked up some books from England. They've released them under seven dials. We've got Hachette. We've got two other companies releasing them around the world as well. And it really is about the way that we can make ourselves feel a million dollars, the way that we can make our customers feel great, and create that win-win situation. So when you say the interesting when thing you, is when whether you, when you say raw sorry. raw behavior style, what do you mean? Okay, so I've got a quote here that I wrote. What you believe doesn't make you a better person. Mm-hmm. The way you behave does. Sure. Because what we believe isn't always right. Mm-hmm. Now we have natural behavior styles. I can connect and communicate with anyone anywhere. I went to China and within two days had a contract. I've been back there every year to speak for the Translators Association and the Foreign Ministers. Now, everyone says it's very, very hard to get a deal in China. It takes a long time. I've worked in Saudi Arabia, UAE, lots of countries that, you know, it's it's got a lot of different culture, rural aspects that we need to know about. So it really is about being intelligent when it comes to communication. So we do need to, you know, what are you doing to upgrade your number one skills in communication? And I'm a body language expert. And I truly believe this is why uh, I get better results with what I do. Mm. So we need to study. We need to learn. We need to immerse ourselves in communication. And when we understand behavior styles, whether that person is dominant, are they breathing fast? Are they commanding? Whether they're influential and they want you to be their best friend, they want you to like them, they want to tell you everything that's happening, or whether perhaps they're a little bit more steady and they need to build that relationship with you. So how, before they're going to give you anything. Yeah. So how can how can or a, last but not least. So go on. Last but not least, they might be the person that really wants all the facts and figures mm-hmm. before anything's going to happen. Now, you have a natural way that you want to do business. Yep. But that might not suit the other 75% of people. Mm-hmm. So once you start to understand how you can connect and communicate, we can also do this through our emails, our social media. Etc. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, what was the question? No, the question was: so how how does a salesperson or anyone else how do they establish uh, very quickly or early on the type of person they're dealing with and the preferences that that person has for how they want to be communicated with? Fabulous! It's about being conscious. The first thing you need to do, though, is understand your behavior style. 
Mm-hmm. You need to understand your domino effect in every communication that you have. And, you know, it's interesting because body language is in every communication experience you'll ever have. Even when you're typing that email, you are going to have a certain body language coming through. Even when you're speaking, even right now when we're speaking to each other Mm -hmm. or um, when we meet someone face to face. So we've got to start to understand who we are. And even in, in my book here, I have a PDF you can download, you can fill in, or you can fill it in straight from the book and start to understand who you are how you connect and communicate, what is going to be the best way for you. Because let's face it, if you have a business, everyone in your business, you want them to be a salesperson for your team. Mm -hmm. People hate the word sales and we need to get over that. If you don't sell, you don't have a business, (laughs) right? Well, what I always say, what I always say to people when they have a problem with the whole sales moniker is I say, you can call yourself whatever you want, but guess what? The person you're selling to, they know you're a salesperson. (laughs) <laughs> and they are too yeah. they are too we have to remember that as well mm-hmm. and you know I always think to sell is to serve because if someone comes to you or you go to someone and you don't provide that service for them then you haven't really served them have you mm-hmm. No. and a lot of people you'll go and buy something and then you go home and someone will say oh you should have got this or this or you could add that to it they didn't even tell you about it now you've got to waste your time going back to find out what you need and perhaps you'll go somewhere somewhere else because they didn't satisfy your needs. So what are what are some of the simple body language cues that you can pick up on either about yourself or about the person that you're communicating with? Okay, so the first thing I'll talk about is yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, very important to understand the cultures you're going into because body language is different around the world. Sure. You know, if you did this here in Australia, that would be okay. Or on Facebook, you might like it. In uh, India, maybe you're going to get a seven up. If you were scuba diving and you said, yeah, I'm okay, they'd shoot you to the top because <laughs> you'd have to do that. If you did that in some countries, it'd be very rude and you might get, you know, put in jail. So it's really important, number one, to, to understand that. But there's a few things that we can do that will make a difference anywhere with anyone. So a lot of salespeople you'll ask them a question or a customer service and they might go like this, oh, yes, do this. Now, straight away, we know they've got a pain in the neck and they're not really sure. And when someone does that, I go, would you please, you know, find out for me? It's very, Mm -hmm. very important because I know straight away they don't really know. Mm -hmm. Now, body language is very subjective. If I touch my nose now, it's probably because it's freezing cold (laughs) and and it wants to drip, right? Right. Or perhaps I want to sneeze or maybe I've smelled something really bad. But what's interesting is most of the time when salespeople are speaking, they touch their nose because they're a little frustrated and uncomfortable right now. Mm. So you'll see people online telling you how fantastic their product is. (laughs) You're going to add heaps of value and it's a great price for what you get. (laughs) It's true. And when they do that, I know at that time they're not comfortable with it. Now, I can train people not to touch their face, to sure. make great eye contact, not to blink a hundred times. But you know what? I rather coach them to understand why they have a frustration there, what makes them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And if it's not great for the customer, what can you do to make it great for the customer? Because yeah. those frustrations and movements will go away once you have great product knowledge and, and you believe in the benefit to that customer. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I think it's an interesting it, it it's an interesting uh, concept that you brought up there because I do think that how you present yourself, how you go into a room, how you go online, whatever, how you're feeling and how you approach it is going to translate in one way or the other. Yeah, you know, obviously through, you know, nonverbal communications and through and through how you sound and and so you kind of have to make up your mind before you start about how do you want to show up, right? Correct. Absolutely. We react in one twenty-fifth of a second before we speak. And that's why husbands and wives can fight for two days without (laughs) saying a word because of the raise of an eyebrow at the wrong time. (laughs) And this happens in your offices as well. And you might even see a client, you know, and you think, oh, here they come again. Um, What am I going to do? And straight away, you've told them that mm -hmm. even before you've opened your mouth. And that's why we have so much miscommunication. And, you know, it's interesting because when we're talking about behavior styles before, even in your emails, you can start to tell who the person is. Are they dot pointing? Do they want you to do this, this, and this? Mm -hmm. Are they after your facts and figures? Do they put smileys everywhere because they want you to be happy with them? 
Yeah. You know, or are they going to tell you all about everything and you don't even really understand what is that question they want, right? But it starts to tell you who they are. Yeah, and I guess then the worst thing you can do, right, if, if um, for instance, right, if you email me with very concise bullet points and this is what you want and I email you back a novel, right, yes. um, we're, we're pretty misaligned, right? Correct, <laughs> correct. So it really is about, like, I believe to sell is to serve. Mm-hmm. And when you do find out who that customer is, because they'll let you know. Mm-hmm. You'll hear it in their voice, you'll see it online, you might meet them face to face or you'll get it through that email. You start to find out who they are and you need to respond, so you need to match them because guess what? There'll be something about you that they like but they won't know what it is. Right. But it's actually the fact that you are like them. People like like, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. I was telling somebody, I was interviewing somebody the other day and they told me this this interesting story. I think they were they were doing a ride along with the salesperson, right? And the salesperson got a text from their prospect and immediately they picked up the phone and started calling them, calling the prospect. And the prospect was like, Well, can you just text me back? Didn't they? and the coach mm. turned around and said, Why did you call him when he texted you? Clearly that's how he wanted you to communicate. Mm. So mm. you've got to match people's communication style. You do, and I I do believe though that someone might email you inf- uh, asking for information, and you if you just email that back, guess what? You might lose that deal sure. because you haven't been able to speak or add value. So in that text that you send back, you could say, "Look, I'd love to have a quick chat just to do a discovery and make sure what would be the best time for you." So yeah. text them, email them back in their format. But think in that time that you can actually do a real discovery and add value. No, ab- absolutely. I know 100% agree. But don't presume that you can just switch their mode just like that without any warning. Correct. <laughs> Correct. I remember somebody wanted me and they sent me a message in Messenger. Uh-huh. And then they sent me something on LinkedIn. And then they sent me an email. And by the time we were supposed to meet, I had no idea where I had to go to get the information. <laughs> So, you I'm know, surprised they didn't turn up outside your window <laughs> <laughs> with a placard. <laughs> so, you know, it, and in those situations, you know, you're responding on Messenger, then yeah. LinkedIn, then, you know, it's like, oh, let's agree to to have which is the best form of communication for you. But but one thing just to come back to, because I think it's a, it's a really, really fundamental and an important point, and not just for sales, but I think in the world that we live in today, because communication has gotten so messed up, is that we all have to start with ourselves, right? The onus is on us to right. to to be conscious of how we communicate and how we show up and rather than put the rather than as it seems uh the trend in the world today is to push everything off on everybody else and say oh, well it's all everybody else's fault but it's you got to start with yourself right absolutely and look the reason that after all these years we are still such bad communicators no matter how many forms of communication we create mm-hmm. Is I believe there's a couple of things with human nature. And we understand it once we understand the behavior styles. Each one will have their own right. little basement that we have to work through. Uh, but there's a thing called ego mm-hmm. and also laziness. Yep. And I believe when you're a salesperson, you really want to eradicate those two things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, laziness is just sending out, spraying information to everybody. If you're a salesperson, which we all are, we need to have that communication. We need to pick up the phone. We need to ask questions and not just read someone, create a story for that person. Oh, I don't want to disturb them or they're too busy. You know, one of my biggest clients, I got them as a contact, first of all, and Mm -hmm. I I get a lot of business through LinkedIn. So Mm -hmm. it is great out there. And uh, um, I contacted them and they said, oh, fantastic. Can you send through some information? Sent that through a month later, did my follow up. Oh, yeah, we're not ready yet. Um, you know, please get back in contact with us. So I diaried for six months mm. following up and contact them. And then I said, because we'd start to build a bit of a relationship. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm feeling like a stalker. Do you still want me to communicate with you? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But that's that was that person's behavior style. There was mm-hmm. steadiness. It's going to take them a little longer. Right. 13 months later, we sealed the deal. Mm-hmm. For over five hundred thousand dollars worth of training that was ongoing over the next eighteen months. So the interesting thing is, 
that we feel we should give up or we could make stories or they don't really want want this but you don't know unless you ask the question yeah. don't make up story yeah I, I, and if they say no if they say no we all know that that just leads us to oh what can we do yeah no exactly but it's a great point because it's um it's because people do have a tendency to you know either to give up and i think the point that you came up about uh, that you mentioned about laziness is a good one too it's because unfortunately uh, again going back to technology We've spoiled, we're spoiled with all these spray and pray spam tools out there. So I could sit here all day and I can fire out stuff all over the place. And if nobody comes back to me or I can just put them into nurture come back, and I don't have to do anything, right? I can sit there and then I can go, well, I'm trying. I'm really trying. I'm doing follow up, but nobody's contacting me. So it's not my fault again. <laughs> <laughs> again. Um I've got this great little thing that I'd love to share with your listeners yeah. and I call it digger. And I believe if you are a sales person getting paid for commission, we're not always the best with admin and paperwork. Mm -hmm. So I, I truly believe setting up the night before so that when you come in the next morning, you can just nail those first three things. You know, we've all heard, you know, swallow the frog, eat the spider, do mm -hmm. the things you don't really want to do first up. But Digger in Australia were the men that went to war and they, they had a person with them that helped them get through everything. And, you know, that was like the word mate. And in Australia, you don't call anyone a digger, even if they, they're your mate, because that was war. And like, I lost mm. my grand, mm. grandfather there as well. But Digger for me is daily income generating activity. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again, daily income generating activity. And so that's my best mate in business. So I write down three things each day, whether it's doing the blog, whether it's doing the video, whether it's making a, um, a hot call, a cold call, maybe getting some of those warm leads. But every day you should be doing something that really will bring in money for the business. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice because I think we're all very good sometimes at busy work or finding things to occupy our day and and sometimes avoiding the the as you say the digger the daily income generating activities. Look, I got a first time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, because they maybe are the harder things to do. Yeah. Yep. And we get that out of the way, then the rest of the day is amazing. <laughs> Plus, it starts to unfold. Yeah. You know, and it really is. If we want to be successful in business, we need to upgrade that number one skill of communication. Well, that's fantastic. Perfect uh, way to bookend the conversation here, Catherine. We're bumping up against the end of our time. But before we go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do and how they can learn out, learn more about you. Oh, OK. Fabulous. So um, obviously... Catherine Malloy, and I am an international speaker. I work all around the world and I speak in communication and body language because I really believe in business growth. I wrote the book, The Million Dollar Handshake, because what happened was 10 years ago, um, my husband fell very ill. We had to sell our business. Um, we lost over a million dollars that was tied up in the billion business. We had three children still at a private school and we were then left with a big mortgage on the house. That also left us with no jobs. So there was a big decision time. Wow. And I was sort of the person that I thought, wow, this is almost a chance to, to open the door to what's possible in life. What do I really, really want to do? And back when I was 21, I started studying body language. By the age of 22, I was topping sales in Westpac, one of our biggest banks here mm -hmm. in Australia. And I really understood how that product knowledge equaled customer service and from customer service sales flowed. But when you could understand people and not just read body language and make up stories for them, but understand what your body language was communi communicating to others, then I really started to nail it. And I went into training. I wasn't having children. My husband said he couldn't have kids and we had three and four years. <laughs> so that kind of changed everything. And I thought I need to learn more about body language. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> sounds, sounds like you learned plenty. <laughs> I know. I see some meetings and, you know, girls are sitting there and go, okay, she really likes him. Um, 
But anyway, it was interesting. So I started this business, um, Auspac Business Advantage, and it was really dealing with soft skills. We also had government funding to um, deliver Diploma of Leadership Management. Mm -hmm. So I wrote units for that. I won awards in management and leadership. I've won awards in America with our Stevie for um, our sales and leadership training. Uh -huh. And I also wrote the Conscious uh, Connection Framework, which won an Asia Pacific Award back in 2017. So what we're doing was making a big difference for, for people. And so now we've also, with our Million Dollar Handshake book, uh, because in my first year of business by myself, I signed over a million dollars in training deals right. face to face. So that's how that began. It's got body language, the handshakes, uh, behaviors mindsets and how to connect and communicate with anyone anywhere um case studies stories and there's online training at the end of each chapter so if you want to go a bit deeper in any of those you can you can download pdfs for your team for your family uh, i just really want to get this message out to as many people as possible and now a third of that book um goes to our charity that i started in 2010 when i started my business i said to my husband 10 percent's going to charity and he's like you can't we've lost all this money i said I need that because right. for me, I need to be doing more than just just mm -hmm. for us. And now a third of it goes to our charities in Uganda. And this year, we're writing a book, A Life Worth Leading. And we're also working with doctors in Mumbai uh, for cancer patients, children that would actually die because they don't have money for, to treat cancer. And now they're getting 12 months in this amazing hospital being looked after with their families coming in so that they can um, go on with their lives as well. So I think once we use our skills to the best that we can, yeah, we can make a difference anywhere. That's fantastic. Well, the, so it sounds like you're, you know, you've got a lot of spare time on your hands, Catherine. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, uh, that's quite a fantastic. Obviously, it's CatherineMalloy.com.au. We will have your profile on on uh, Sales Pop so people can learn more about you. And, uh, and the book will be up there, too. And uh, congratulations on all your awards and the fantastic uh, work, charity work that you're doing, too. It's been a great conversation. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.